and Cheryl. Cheryl and Carol. Carol and Cheryl. Hi, welcome back to Conversations with Carol and Cheryl. How are you, Carol? I'm doing good. How you doing, Cheryl? I'm doing good, too. Who's our guest today? Yay! It's Carla! Yay! Carla! She's it's back! Carla. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. <laughs> it's been so long. For those that can't see, we're doing pelvic slams, <laughs> which I did on my wedding in my wedding dress. Oh, my gosh. Welcome to the show, Carla. Thank you. So what do you want to talk about today? As we were discussing just the other day, my husband has gone down this like wacky conspiracy theory, not to offend the conspiracy theorists, but he's getting crazy and it's starting to really impact our lives. Um, the relationships with our kids, you know, our grandkids. So I thought it would be good to just talk about, I guess, my experience and whatever experiences you all have. By no means an expert. I'm just talking about what's happening in my life. But I've had to tell my doctors about it. And, you know, because it's really gotten kind of crazy. People that are going through the same thing hear this. At least they'll know that they're not alone in what they're going through. Well, what is the definition of a conspiracy theory? Just in your own words. In your own words, um, it is. I guess, alternative theories uh, for events that have happened. But in these cases, and what I'm talking about here are not conspiracy theories, but they are conspiracy theories to the extent that not only is it an alternate idea of how something might happen, it is a completely outrageous idea of what you know might have happened. So give us an example. Is it QAnon, that type of thing? Yes. So QAnon is a big part of what we're dealing with. I have. All right. So get into that. What is QAnon? Okay. So QAnon back in, I actually do know something about this. Back in 2017, a blogger or internet guy who called himself Q, and the Q stood for his genius IQ or his self-professed genius IQ. Um, And he talked about this underground cabal of celebrities, high profile politicians who were running this child pornography ring and this child abuse ring and child trafficking ring. And then it kind of really picked up speed during the run up to the election and then since the election, where I first went online looking for things about QAnon. And then I started looking for things like families impacted by QAnon. And you start to see articles from people who have kind of gone down the rabbit hole and got their way out, which is very difficult because it's a bit humiliating. Um, and other people who, so, so many people who had relatives that were hardcore Democrats, hardcore liberals that somehow made it from that side of things all the way to the other side. You know, the one uh, story I read was about a woman whose mother had gone through and she was like, my mother was so liberal, like close to a socialist. Over the last year or so, mostly this past year, She just went to the whole other side. Everyone's out to get him and that, you know, President Trump had it right and they stole the election from him. And there's these QAnon things where, you know, the whole child pornography thing kind of took a hold of this woman's mother, you know, and her sensitivities. And, uh, you know, and then it kind of just snowballed from there. It's like you kind of go in one door and... Once you're into one of these things, like it could be the election was stolen from Trump, it could be the QAnon, it could be uh, America is not really a government, it's a corporation that's run by, you know, it's a corporation and the states are actually a corporation. 
and all of this and that the that the United States is really a corporation and the only real flag, some guy who was the CEO of the corporation is the only one with the real flag. And the flags that run at government offices with the gold tassels are really maritime flags. It's like this whole, you know, it's that stuff or... Um, like the earth is flat. Let's go to something like really dramatic. The vaccine is altering your DNA for a grand conspiracy to make us more docile and agreeable. And then later they're going to put chips in us so they can track us and do things to impact our brains. One of them that's, that we're going to have a civil war, uh, satanic, satanic Illuminati, like Jay-Z and Beyonce are like big people in this satanic Illuminati. And they show all these things, like the Rockefeller thing that he does is a sign of Satan and the Illuminati. You know, like Missy Elliott is famous again because he's been doing blood sacrifices. This kind of stuff. What I read is that guy Q, he started it out to make money, right? Is that what you read? No, that's it's not what I read, but I haven't done all that much research. Okay. It, I just know that it started with him and that he, the Q thing was his IQ and that he was just uh, putting all this out here. Your husband, what makes you think, why do you think he connected to it? What do you think, what do you think the magnet is for these people? I think if you start reading about it, so many different people, for di you know, from different economic backgrounds and social backgrounds Norman's kind of a grouchy guy in the first place. And I think probably when the pandemic started, which has impacted a lot of people in this whole area of the pandemic hit, he quit working for a little while for me because I'm a diabetic. And he, you know, we were concerned about him bringing things home. Then he went back to work and was wearing the mask. Now, during this time, is when lots of people were talking about wear the mask or don't wear the mask. And he is, and so am I, you know, we are, we own firearms. We are very much in favor of in our rights. And I, even me feels like, you know, you kind of sit quietly while they take some of your rights and then you don't have anything to stand on when they take all of your rights. So, you know, even I have some of that kind of thinking, but the whole mask wearing became a thing. So then Trump is on TV and we're seeing all of these rallies and all of this stuff. He's saying stuff that Norm is starting to uh, sympathize with because he feels like the virus and other things are starting to eat away at his rights. As people are attacking Trump, you know, he starts to get defensive of Trump. So he starts kind of looking at some of these websites a little bit. You know, he's just Googling on random shit. You know, when it first started, he's just laying around the house not working, so he's Googling on random shit, you know? We know from the documentary Social Dilemma, once you start Googling it, then articles come into your feed automatically. Yes. The more that you read them, the more that come to you. Yes. So then the election came. And Norman goes to bed late one night and Trump is winning. He wakes up the next morning and Trump has lost. And he can't see how that could possibly be true. So then we start seeing all of the stuff about all the cases that they're trying to bring up, you know, to fight it with the machines and all of that stuff. So he starts kind of getting into that. So he starts watching videos about, you know, the suitcases under the tables and because he can't believe to begin with that it changed that much overnight. He doesn't need a whole lot of confirmation because it's feeding into what he already believes to have happened. So these are all the things now that are proving him right. And when you are in that state of mind, like I can tell him till the cows come home that the election wasn't stolen. Because he thinks he's right and he has all these things to support that, he gets more and more defensive.
So when he's looking into this stuff, he starts to get the QAnon stuff. He starts to see that stuff. He starts going to the after election rallies. Like he went to a couple of the rallies. I think he might have gone to one beforehand and one and two after. And he was supposed to go to the one where they attacked the Capitol, but I was sick that day, so he stayed home. Thank God. So fast forward a little bit to inauguration day. So between Trump losing and inauguration day, we're hearing a lot about the theft of the vote. We're starting to hear more about martial law because now he believes that the generals and leadership of the military are going to back Trump. They're going to institute martial law and pretty much make Trump the president. He's got all these websites telling him that that's what's going to happen. He is firm that that's what's going to happen. And it doesn't. So the night of the 19th of January, he thinks, because of what he's seen on the internet, and there's you know quite a few websites that are huge for this stuff. Alex Jones, um, those guys are really big in this. He thinks that the military is going to stand up and take arms again, and that we there's going to be martial law and chaos and anarchy. So he gets his guns out and loads every gun we have and puts them in every room of our house, including my room, because he insists that I have a handgun in my room. So I'm like, whatever gets you through the night, buddy. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of trying my best to just not feed into the stuff, you know. He goes into our basement and takes plywood and barricades our sliding glass door in our basement. Like, not put something up, like, mounts it to the wall. Blocks the two basement windows, you know, barricades them. I guess thinking that upstairs we could fight people off with the arsenal of guns we have or where we wouldn't be able to protect the basement or they could come up from the basement and get to us. So of course, the night goes without incident and Biden is inaugurated. So then the shift goes to that all of Trump's people have all of this information that they're gonna be but every once in a while, he'd say, you know, all will be revealed. He kept saying, all will be revealed. Even quoting Bible stuff. Like there were days in March that something was going to happen because the Bible said so, you know. And so all is going to be revealed. All is going to be revealed. And then QAnon comes on strong because not only is the theft of the election and the fact that there's all these underground things and that. Trump and his people are working on something so they'll be able to get back in leadership to protect our country from the horrible things that Biden and them are going to do. And of course, right away, Biden is signing all these trade things that Norman disagrees with because, you know, one of the things he's liked about Trump was, you know, bringing manufacturing and stuff back to the states or whatever. So then it was all is going to be revealed. We started talking. QAnon started coming up more and more with um, Hanks's, you know, molesting children, Remy uh, Malik, the guy who was in Queen, is uh, eating babies because it's part of a sacrifice so that he'll stay famous. Uh, Jay-Z and them are, like I said before, part of the Illuminati. There's Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton. Of course, everybody that was involved with Jeffrey Epstein, of course, that's all part of this thing. And I kept saying, well, you know, honey, if there's evidence that these people are doing this, don't you think that they would bring that out now? Because every day they don't bring it out, more and more kids are being molested and eaten. You know, I mean, they are not going to wait months and months and months to 
have it all be heard. It all come out at the right time. They've got to get everything together right. And then I mentioned to him, you know, I said, you know, honey, human trafficking, child trafficking has been going on, you know, since people wanted to have sex. You know, I mean, forever, once we're back in Rome, you know, there were these things were going on. Well, I don't believe that, you know, and I said, well, okay. You know, it's not a new thing. Now, he has conceded that it has been going on for a while and he just didn't realize that, you know, but that this particular group of people are what it's all going to come out about. Um, and he believes it 101%. And, and I would say, you know, I am worried about your mental health. Like, I am afraid for you. And he'd say, sometimes I'm afraid for me too, joking around. But, you know, I said, I even told him the other day, I said, I am going to see a therapist because I can't with all of this. I know that you believe everything you're saying and that you're convinced all of these things are going to come to fruition. But it's making me nuts. Well, is it bleeding into other areas? Like, I, I know the guns are in the house. The door is barricaded. Oh for my grandkids to come over, we have to de-arm the house. If I get up to go to the bathroom at night, is he going to think I'm an intruder and shoot me? Or one of the kids gets up. My daughter-in-law, they were having a birthday party for one of the grandkids. And she sent me a text to come. And I said, I'm coming. And I kind of tried to not tell Norm about it. But he heard us, you know, kind of talking. So she texted me. Papa come and I said, yeah, but so I, I actually had to say to him before we left, look, no talk about eating babies, no talk about molesting children. Like I have to go down this list of things he can't do that I never would have thought would ever come out of my mouth. While we're at so-and-so's five-year-old birthday party, <laughs> try not to talk to the party goers about eating babies. <laughs> you know, I mean, that happened. <laughs> Well, everything you said is fear-based. Who should we be afraid of and who is to blame? Who yes. should we be afraid of and who should we blame? And it seems like these theories are all about fear. And yes. the two things that really motivate men is fear and sex. So it's like the hook. The two things together, right. Once yes. they hook them then it's almost like an addiction to yes. the fear. You get addicted to it. they like, come up here, honey, and look at this video. And I'll come up, you know, if it's any of the craziness, I'll say, oh, I don't want to watch that. You know, because in the beginning, I would try to correct him. You know, I'd say, well, go look at this thing or go look at that thing. And then I realized that there is no scenario where I convince him. It's like having an abortion conversation you can talk to somebody who firmly believes in abortion someone who doesn't believe in abortion and they can talk and discuss and debate until the cows come home but when they walk away from that table the one who believed in abortion still does and the one that didn't believe in abortion still does so mm -hmm. i can talk until i'm blue in the face he believes these things are true so what well, have you read what have you read about how people snap out of it. So the one guy, the one I most frequently refer to, you know, he was the same thing, super liberal, super easy going. It started with, he happened upon the Q, you know, the QAnon stuff and was just horrified. And you know, when you want to believe something, you go on the internet, it's like statistics. I can make numbers say anything you want them to. The internet is the same thing. You can go, whatever you believe, there is support for that on the internet. Whatever you believe. God is a cow. It's there. You know, um, that's probably not a good example because some people do, but you know what I'm getting. So this guy said, you know, he really believed it and he would, same as Norman, go to family events. You know, he felt like he was an enlightening his family. You know, you guys just don't understand. This is what's really happening. You know, the country is a corporation. They're not watching out for us. There's going to be a civil war. One of Norm's things was uh, at one point, last couple of months, I want to say Palestine, one of, one of the key countries, the lights went out. They had a blackout. 
And he was like, there's also a blackout in Italy and we're going to have one here. Like they're going to put the whole country in blackout. Of course, luckily I have a friend that lives in Italy and I sent a, a message and I said, do you have lights? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So this guy um, that I was talking about, it's the same kind of stuff. He kept telling his family the same stuff. Oh, well, January 20th, there's going to be martial law, militia, like a whole bunch of militia in the middle of the country is going to stand up and take arms. And it didn't happen. And then after two or three things that he was convinced were going to happen didn't happen, he just kind of had a smack in the face, you know, where he thought one thing doesn't happen. That's okay. So I thought one thing was going to happen. It didn't. But when over and over and over things I thought aren't happening, aren't. There's also that shaman guy, right? And Q. Is it shaman Q or there's two of them? It seems like there was two people that were writing because they compared the writing styles. I was just looking at it the other day. But anyway, one of the leaders of it, uh, whoever it is, said after the January 6th incident, Go home to your loved ones and try and make like peace with them as best you can, or something like that. What well, does your spouse think about that? The guy who started Q is, from what I understand, not even the guy who's really got this stuff going. You know, the it's not the guy who started the you know posting on these blogs. It has taken a life on of its own, far beyond what he was doing. He has never mentioned that to me. And even when they do, like when Trump said, go home, stop doing all this stuff, go home, go get your vaccine, all of that. Every time Trump says something like that, there's hidden messages in what he's saying. That's what he really means. It's like people that want to free Britney Spears. She wears a yellow shirt and they tie all this meaning to why she wears a yellow shirt. His big part of QAnon was more about the child trafficking stuff, not a whole lot of other non stuff. But anyway, the guy who got out of it, other difficult thing was once he started thinking, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I did <laughs> go a little too far, you know, because he was an educated man, you know, like he had a good job, college degree. And he said, then he was so humiliated that having to go back to his family and be like, oh, you know, he felt up so bad because he said, you know, how could I have fallen for this? You know, how could I have used my family? And of course, now he's in therapy and stuff. I said to Norman, along the lines of this guy, after I read this guy's article, I asked Norman, I said, okay, honey, I mean, we can barely talk. Barely talk at all. That doesn't end up in some kind of angst he stays upstairs in the rabbit hole and i work downstairs in the kitchen never shall the two pass collide. but uh i said to him i said you know okay let's say even though nothing you have said is going to happen has happened so what if three years down the road all has not been revealed and they haven't, we don't know anything about Jay-Z and we don't know any more about the kids and no lights have gone out and Trump is not president and there's no martial law. At what point do you say, okay, I might be wrong. Is it a year down the road? Is it three years down the road? Is it never, you know, will you always be looking for this revelation, you know? And he said, yeah. The, you know, the reason they can't prove it is because all the people in power are behind it all. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think that hyper-focusing on this stuff is really a diversion from what he should be focusing on? For example, his marriage, his stepkids, his grands, his work. You know, is it kind of like a drug where you get completely diverted off your reality um, easy answer would be yes, but it's really not. Like, he's totally devoted to the grandkids. His belief in these things will protect them. 
You know, like he called my son at one point and said, you know, you and the kids and Jesse probably need to come stay with us because uh, we can protect people better with the United Front instead of you being at your house because I don't think you're prepared to defend the family there. And of course, my son is like, yeah, Norm, whatever. <laughs> you know, my son's not going to do that. He's a man's man. Like, he's a tough guy. He is dedicated to the family and he loves me. Like, I don't think he would, you know, I told my doctor about it because I was crying all the time. You know, my doctor was like, what's up? It's everywhere, all day, every day. You can't get away from it. But in his, they're like, well, you know, can you tell him this? Can you tell him that? I can, but. It's not going to matter. It, he thinks he's right. right. <laughs> you know? Crazy doesn't know crazy, I guess, but in his mind, protecting all of us. It's touching his protector. It's yes. his knight in shining armor. He's going to protect you. He's going to provide for you. Even with all this chaos, he's going to still show up. Right. And handle everything. Right. And he's got it all planned out. He's completely prepared. Yeah. Like I said, it starts kind of with this QAnon thing, but it now has gone to many, many, many other websites and, you know, militia websites. We were sitting at the dinner table and he was telling me how, you know, this all ties back to John F. Kennedy and his assassination and the things that they were doing, like they were all behind part of this and that when they assassinated him, it was to protect the country because he and his brothers and stuff were going to take the country down this communist kind of way. So he's tied it back to that. The uh, Titanic was an insurance fraud, exercise in insurance fraud that all those people didn't die. They claimed deaths so that they could get the insurance. I can't get five people at, at work to get in the same room and come up with the same plan. Like, how are you getting millions of people around the country? <laughs> the <whole> <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So true. <laughs> So where do you go from here as the wife? Do you just let him live in his little fantasy world and just get on with it? I mean, it doesn't sound like you can change it. I talked to my doctor and, you know, I don't think he's a threat. Quite frankly, I don't want to go through a divorce and I don't even think we're that far. You know, I'm not that, I'm not pushed that far yet. You know, I still love Norm. I think there's, Still, you know, I think a lot of this comes from, like you said, the the need to take care of the people he loves. You know, yeah. I think this comes from a good place. And I think the more he looks at, the more disillusioned he comes. We can't watch TV without seeing subtext. You know, like we'll be watching a sitcom now. And if there's an Asian, a white guy, a black guy, um, and an Indian guy all on the screen together, that's part of the indoctrination of America. You know, he's concerned about my grandkids going back to school because they're going to be indoctrinated. And some of that might be a little bit right. Some of the things he believes in, there is a seed of truth to, you know, or at least something that someone might be concerned about. You know, I've started recently to look at things that psychiatrists and stuff recommend you do like they tell you not to say that's not true or you don't know what you're talking about or you're crazy you know try to be patient and when you are talking to them try to be respectful and try to slide in realities where you can without slapping it in their face you know what i'm saying like without being accusatory uh, I guess it was March 6th or 9th or something. You know, all of these people that were in this conspiracy stuff thought that former President Trump was going to be... That was uh, a real inauguration, March yeah. 4th. Yes, yes. When that didn't happen, I just kind of said, you know, well, I guess we don't have to worry about that. You know, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I think he's starting to get disillusioned by the whole Trump vision you know like i think and i keep telling him 
I think Trump is at Mar-a-Lago golfing. Like he's not feeding into any of the stuff these people are doing. He's not getting on any of these websites saying, yeah, this is going to happen. But he's not doing this. So he, I think he's starting to be disillusioned because things have not happened that he thought were going to happen. So I, I don't know that his paranoia is going away as much as it's being redirected. Like, he will not get a vaccine. He will not get vaccinated. And he reminds me constantly that they're going to mess with my DNA. And I tell him all the time, if they want to come experiment on me, let them have at it because I'm falling apart anyway, you know. <laughs> now the thing is, going on and on about how all the banks are going belly up and eating. Something is happening in April and all the financial institutions are going to collapse, which will put us in chaos of some sort. Like you said, he'll protect us from it. So I'm hoping like at the end of April, I'll be able to, in a very respectful way, say, you know, well, I'm glad nothing happened because, you know, I was worried about my retirement or whatever. It but sounds I like he has a lot of time to read about this stuff, too. Is he right. on his device all the time researching, yeah. reading? So he had gone back to work, remember I told you before. I want to say late January. He was at work and he had his mask on because you have to wear your mask to work. You know, he grew up poor. He wants to work. He likes to have cushion, financial cushion, you know. Working on something in the ceiling and it fell down below his nose and the safety guy came around the corner. And said, you're not wearing your mask right. I have to kick you off the job site for the day. So he came home furious. He went in the next day and they said, you know, all right, Nora. Well, you know, if it happens again, we're going to have to let you go. Of course, he's a union guy, so he would just go to another job. But he got pissed off and he was fire me now. You know, I, I don't even want to wear this mask. We'll just lay you off, you know, and when things are settled down a little bit, bring you back. He took the layoff and came home. I don't know what you're doing, but if you can't make your half of the mortgage payment, we're going to have a problem. So this snowballed like within a year's time, right? And the largest part of it, I would say from September to now, uh, when we were all home at the beginning, like everyone, he was alarmed about COVID. Now as time has gone on and he's starting to see these things, he was starting down that rabbit hole. The heat up to November started about September when the rallies were happening. And he was watching like YouTube, this guy on YouTube that like lots of people was protesting legally for Trump. And uh, that was the window in a little bit. The biggest part of it has been since September and since Trump had the election stolen from me. So maybe since it snowballed so quickly, the, once you start seeing all these things not happening, maybe he'll change. But what do you guys think is the outcome that these people that are putting these lies out, what is the end for them? I think it breeds their power. You know, they have power over these people and they are adored by these people. Norman loves the guys that he watches and their followers have dramatically so it's all money those yeah. guys get money from all that in fame and power let's same thing that drives tons of people yeah know? yeah let's say enough stuff doesn't happen and he starts to doubt them i'm afraid that he will continue out of embarrassment like can he admit he was wrong and he wouldn't even have to do that just stop talking about it and i'll let it go you know is he going to be able to mentally accept being wrong? Well, have you put that out there that just so you know, should you ever change your mind? You just, like you said, we just don't talk about it anymore. Nothing will be brought up. I don't think I've said it in those words. I can't fix him. He doesn't think he's crazy, so he's not going to fix him. So I really think me going to therapy and maybe that person can help me figure out how to talk to him, figure out how to approach this stuff without making it adversarial. I told my one doctor, she agreed. I was like, I'm going to start going and staying at my sister's house one night a week, just be a part. Right. To have a break. I yeah. think if you just stop talking about it, like when he's talking, just shake your head. Mm -hmm, okay. 
don't engage in it. I think the bigger problem is going to be him forgiving himself. Right. And trusting himself. Right. It's not going to be your reaction because you're going to be loving and compassionate, at least to his face. Right. <laughs> you know, behind his back, you might be going, ha, 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 I knew it. I yeah. think it's going to be his dealing with it, trusting himself and forgiving himself for being so sucked into something. But it's easy to be sucked in. He's got to just be good to himself and say, this is easy when it's coming in your feed and you're just brainwashed. Yeah. Like you said, it, your feed multiplies. And like I said, when, when you want to believe something, the internet will help you do that. Yes. You know, they are happy to find some kind of, you know, anybody can write anything. A blog could be me getting on there talking about unicorns. And if somebody wants to believe in unicorns, I'll believe everything. I said. Sometimes I think to myself, and again, it's power and greed, but how do those people sleep at night? You know, right. but, I wonder that too. It's disgusting. Are really impacting, you know, my thing, me and Norman live with each other. We're, you know, middle-aged, middle-class. So what about the 80 year old lady who's alienating her family that she needs to care for her for this stuff or 20 year old guys who go take action because they think shooting somebody is going to, you know, stop baby traffic or whatever, you know? Right. But yeah, you know, I, I hope, hope it comes out of it at some point. Yeah. Well, there's um the QAnon casualties where there's all the stories about people that, you know, lost family members. I mean, they're just like, it's like some family members are dying in front of them and they know that they're going to eventually cut ties with them and yeah. they're going to be dead to them because they can't reach them. And it's really, really, really sad. And he's a good man. You know, that's the thing. Well, like I said, the other thing is it's tribe, what I call tribe 101. This is his tribe now. These are his people. He feels like he belongs. You know, it's not enough to be American. It's not enough to root for a certain football team. It's not enough to belong to a certain union. When you can find a tribe that you can follow and you feel like you belong and you're one of the guys, that is really powerful. And yeah. it sounds like that's part of it for him, too. Absolutely. But I like what you're doing, that you're taking the focus off of him and putting it on yourself. Yeah. How can I be a better partner? How can I communicate better? How can I not cut his dick off every time he opens his mouth? Oh that, to me, you're the ultimate wife in doing that. No, Really? That's yeah, pretty true nice. love because you're really trying to hold your marriage together and kind of love him where he's at right. and cope with it. And it sounds like it's becoming more extreme as time goes on, but it could be peaking too, as yeah. you said, as things don't evolve. But then if one thing does evolve, oh my God. 20 things could not happen, but one thing does, boy, that'll be all the evidence he needs. I just hope, like I said, that anybody that's listening, whether it's as extreme as Norman's case or less or more or whatever, hears this and kind of knows that they're not alone. And don't search the conspiracy theories looking for answers search the recovery sites looking for answers. Don't go down the rabbit hole with them. Look yeah, no, that's good advice. Talk to them and look for how to, you know, keep yourself whole so that you can help them. You got to keep yourself safe first. Yeah, because we're affected by the pandemic and we're lonely, we're isolated. Right. And we're trying to survive too and take care of our work and the kids. I think it's really hard on women. Oh, absolutely. The pandemic, you know, you're homeschooling, you're on a Zoom, you've got pajama bottoms on and a bra on top and your hair done and you're trying to just keep it all together. Wore <laughs> pajamas to a Zoom meeting not long ago. <laughs> Dude. I just said it was like 
15 of us. And I was like, look, I'm in my pajamas. Just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, if you hadn't told us, we'd have thought you had a T-shirt on. And I said, ah, why fake it? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it was bad when you did the Zoom meetings in your bunny slippers. But full out pajamas? <laughs> OMG. <laughs> It was straight up jammies. Marla, it's really been great having you on. It's been good for me. And I really appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. I want to remind our fans to like our Facebook page, check out our Instagram, our YouTube, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you. Carolyn Cheryl, thank you. Carolyn Cheryl, thank you.